Model engineering for beginners, rectifying mistakes on a piece of brass. And who made the mistakes? I did. Did I do it on purpose? No. Was I just being incompetent? Yes, and please read that as incompetent, not incontinent. To be honest, I've not really been in the mood this week, because one of my daughters is currently giving birth. I find the whole process of reproduction quite amazing. I don't mean the first bit, I mean the bits that follow on, like when the alien burst out of John Hurt, shrieked and ran across the room. Anyway, on with the video. One of the projects that I'm working on is called Making a Stuart Model Steam Plant. And here is the hand pump mounted on a brass block, very badly. Why did I do it this way? Well, I don't know. It just seemed like a good idea at the time. This part of the job is OK. All of the studs are securely loctited into the holes in the baseboard. Things went wrong when I marked out the brass block and drilled the holes slightly in the wrong place. These studs are 4BA, and the clearance size for 4BA is 9 64 of an inch. But unfortunately, I didn't mark out the positions correctly, and if you look closely at the piece of brass, you will see that the holes are not in the right place. And to make this piece of brass fit over the studs, I had to drill out the holes to, believe it or not, 3 16 of an inch. There are two things wrong here. One is, the piece of brass is far too big. I thought it would look OK, but it doesn't. And the other thing that's wrong is just the atrocious workmanship. I really can't live with this. Every time I look at this image, it makes me cringe. There are different ways to fix holes in the wrong place in pieces of metal. Had this mounting base have been made using a piece of steel, the fix would have been simple. I could have used my MIG welder to block up the holes, but the part I'm working on is made from brass. Another option would be to drill and thread these and plug them. 3 16 which is the size of the holes in the brass, is tapping size for 2BA, but I'm not going to plug up the holes in this way either. Necessity is the mother of invention, and often I find alternative ways of doing jobs like the one I'm about to show you. I took the piece of brass into the outer part of the workshop and sat it on the brazing hearth. Then I removed the blowtorch head that I use most frequently and fitted a larger one. You can see how much bigger the one I've just fitted is. The small burner head's great for general purpose jobs like piping, but for this job I need a lot more heat. In this clip you really can see how far out of alignment the holes are. The job begins by a generous application of flux. This is Easy Flow number 2 flux, and the silver solder that I'm going to use is called Silver Flow 55. Now it's time to turn on the heat. When I make tutorials about silver soldering, I always apply the silver solder too early on in the job. In this clip, the camera makes it look like the silver solder rod is in the flame. It isn't, it's just quite nearby. It takes a while to get this component to the required heat to melt the solder. I'm going to apply some silver solder to one of the holes to show you what happens. The heat from the blowtorch melts the silver solder stick at the end, but the silver solder does not flow into the hole. It just sits on top like a ball. Normally I would wait until the flux took on a watery appearance before applying the silver solder. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I am applying the silver solder too early as I've just mentioned. After a while, as the piece of brass gets a lot hotter, something starts to happen. The silver solder immediately flows into the holes and fills them up. After a few applications of the silver solder, which is now getting a bit too close to the heat, so I'm holding the rod with a pair of pliers. The brass bar is starting to glow red now. Here's a shot of the piece of brass cooling. It's going to need quenching just to remove some of the shale. But you do need to let the part cool first. If you put the piece of brass into cold water when the silver solder is still runny, it will make a mess of it. It doesn't take long for the brass to cool. I left it a couple of minutes before I quenched it. In this clip, using my 4-inch belt sander, I'm cleaning up all the surfaces of the piece of brass. By using my bandsaw, I've chopped off the end. So the piece I'm going to use, which is now on screen, is just over the finished length that I need it to be. What I'm doing here is applying some marking out blue. And I do notice the slight mark on the top, but this will not be a problem because I need to cut this brass to match the size of the base. First of all though, I need to mark it out accurately so that the piece of brass becomes the same size as the base of the pump. 
over now to the milling machine and the first job is to trim the end to the correct size and that's the end I cut on the bandsaw. Once I did that I removed the piece of brass from the machine vise and turned it round to allow me to mill the side of the piece of brass. Once I'd done that I marked out the position for the holes. Once I'd drilled the holes in the piece of brass and I actually used a 530 seconds of an inch drill. As you can see this is looking a whole lot better. And when I mount the pump on the brass base, it's looking good. I'm going to paint the clamps in this area black. I'm also going to repaint the pump. I'm also going to paint the mounting base for the pump black to match the mounting base for the double 10 V, which will sit almost in the centre of the baseboard. There you have it. Filling holes in brass using silver solder is quite an expensive operation because it does take quite a bit of silver solder, which is expensive. Here's a flashback, this is what it looked like when I first made the pump base. And now, after taking a lot more care with the job, it looks like this, and I think it's considerably better. It was definitely worth the time and effort. And that is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.